the morning of April 25th, 2010, at 6.30 a.m., Heidi Fergus calls 911. Someone's trying to break into my home. She tells the state patrol dispatcher that someone is trying to break into her house, and she's trying to give her address. 1794, Minnehaha Avenue. While she's on the phone, you can hear a loud noise, and the phone goes dead. Well, I don't know where she went there. Six, five, one. Uh, approximately a minute later, Nicholas Fergus calls 911, says that he and his wife have both been shot. Yeah. Are you in St. Paul, sir? St. Paul fire paramedics took Nick out to the ambulance and transported him to Regents Hospital. He had been shot in the leg. Heidi was struck in the back as she was trying to flee towards the kitchen. It was a shotgun blast that killed her right away. The shotgun was laying inside the front door area. There's a little foyer. Nick gave a brief story. He heard somebody fiddling around with the door and that he then armed himself with a shotgun and that Nick and the intruder struggled over the shotgun. The responding officers uh, went up and down the block trying to talk to neighbors. I was next door house sitting when the crime happened. Really all I heard was kind of this agonizing yell of, you shot her, you shot me. Did police ever have any luck tracking down the intruder that Nick described? No. You know, I'm looking, I didn't see anybody come out of that house. Brandon O'Connor was house sitting next door to the Ferguses and taking care of kittens. I was woken up by the kittens, kind of walking around. Some noise caught my attention, so I stuck my head out the window, kind of listen. Brandon says he recalls hearing a muffled argument coming from the Ferguses' house, listening through an open window. That's when I ended up hearing what sounded like gunshots. When police first interviewed him, Brandon said he also heard a male voice. Kind of this agonizing yell of, you shot her, you shot me, uh, please, please, no, something along those lines, and then, then it was done. First responders rushed to the scene. There was nothing they could do for Heidi. She was pronounced dead. Nick was rushed to the hospital and treated for a grazed gunshot wound to his leg. He seemed not to be sure whether or not Heidi had been killed. Like I said, we'll do our best to find out how, how Heidi's doing, okay. please. Hours later, Nick was transported to the St. Paul Police Department. Then Nick and I started to have our conversation in the conference room. Sergeant Jim Gray took Nick's statement. You know, I know this is a very traumatic situation, okay? And I'm just going to try and ease into it, okay? okay. So we'll Nick said the couple ordered in food the night before and watched the movie Avatar. They went upstairs to their bedroom around 11 p.m. The next morning, Nick got up around 6 a.m. to get a drink of water from the bathroom. Go back to sleep, but just kind of fitfully sleep for 10 or 15 minutes, and then I heard the screen door open. Kind of let it go for a little while, but then I started hearing, feeling with our doorknob. And is Heidi still sleeping then? Yeah. Okay. Like a rock. Nick said he retrieved his shotgun from the closet. I keep two shells for it just in case things go weird. So when I heard things this morning, I did load it. And then I wake up Heidi. Okay. According to Nick, he told Heidi someone was trying to break in and to call 911. Someone's trying to break into my home. They headed downstairs so they could get out of the house. What address are you at? All right, so are you going first down the stairs or is she, is she behind you or is she in front of you or what? Um, she's in front because I'm kind of trying to move her along quickly. Nick said as they passed by the front door, it burst open. Guy that was there, I think he, he grabbed the barrel. I don't remember exactly what happened, but the gun went off. So my fingers slipped out of the trigger. Nick told Sergeant Gray during the struggle over the weapon, the gun fired. <laughs> striking Heidi, who he said was in the kitchen. Okay, so the guns... Guns here, yep. chest high. Yep, you and I are like this. Yep. And then the gun goes off? Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I know it hit Heidi. I just, I know it did. She was running away, so it definitely hit her in the back. It hit her in the back. Yeah. Sergeant Gray started probing into their marriage. You guys uh, have any problems or anything like that? Well, it's just the normal stuff, like, uh, you know, stresses about finances and quality time. Vacations and all that stuff. Yeah, but you guys aren't behind in the bills or anything. We are behind in, in the bills. Um, 
which is a little stressful. In fact, we were planning on moving tomorrow. Uh, moving where? Well, we hadn't figured that out yet. We were, and and this is a, a hard. It's a hard place for us. Uh, we were foreclosing on our. We foreclosed on our house. Nick revealed they were behind on their mortgage payments and just 24 hours away from being evicted from their home. Well, that's kind of, I mean, kind of close notice. It is, and I think the reason is because we're both kind of dealing with the shape of the whole thing. Gray says his suspicions were raised, and minutes later, he was struck by the way Nick asked about Heidi. Well, I, I just want to know the final answer on, uh, the final answer on Heidi. She didn't make it. I figured that. I mean, is that typically how someone asks if their loved one or spouse has been killed? Not only is that not typical that that's how they'd ask it, but they wouldn't wait an hour and forty minutes into this conversation to ask that question. And I've watched the interview obviously numerous times, and I understand people react to trauma differently, but. This was different than what I'd seen. Anybody that's watched that interview cannot help but be struck by Nick's demeanor during it.